you, you said you were at the Eye of the Blue tour. Yes. Right, the album was Eye of the Blue, okay? Yeah. And that was released. I remember buying it. I bought it, I think, started December 1977. Mm -hmm. And you got a cut out in all of the spaceship. But yes. Yeah. Right, 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 you know. And uh, Ivan Martin sold it to me. Remember Ivan? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ivan was working in one of Terry's Hooley's uh, record shops at the time. And I got it home. I thought, uh, absolutely brilliant. Um, not a bad track on this. Yeah. The bits and pieces have got slated since, like the whale and Birmingham blues and that sort of stuff. But I put on that first yeah. side and I thought this is great. Yeah, yeah. And then night in the city and everything else. And then a number of years later, I heard an interview with with Lynn, and the, he wrote the album in Switzerland. Right. And they had been there, I think, a fortnight. And it had been bucket and rain, and he'd written nothing at all. One day, he got up. Opened the curtains, saw the machine uh -huh. in the sky, yeah. and there wasn't a cloud in sight. <laughs> no rain. So, no. I mean, that's, that's. You know, I love hearing uh, anecdotes about songs. Yes, yeah. Um, who wrote what, and the fact that, for example, sometimes it's shocking, you know, the ballad of John and Yoko. Mm. In the studio, George, uh, sorry, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, and nobody else. Okay, so the two boys did, did the single, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, on one of the releases of Love Me Do, Ringo didn't play drums. And, you know, you get all these bits and pieces and that, and then you can pick up stuff, you know, as you, and then it impresses people. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else will say, I didn't know that, yeah. but I know it now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And again, that storytelling, isn't it? So it's all about developing oh, um, communication and getting mm -hmm. people chatting mm -hmm. and, you know, we were talking about social media. But I do media. think everybody has a story in them. Yes. Everybody uh, has. Which everybody. is why, why we're trying to do these yeah. interviews. Everybody yeah. has a book in them. Yes. Yeah. So, you know? Yeah. Sorry I interrupted. No, no, no. But I, I think, I think, I mean, I've written a couple of novels myself. Mm. And uh, um, one of the things I'm finding is that there's nobody that's ordinary. Everybody's mm. kind of extraordinary. Mm. And if you can get down and sit with them mm. and chat, mm -hmm and find out the story they have behind them, yeah. you begin to discover something yeah. that was really, really amazing. Yeah, well, I think, um, I used to enjoy Georgie, probably would have known him, uh, John Campbell, who, from, yeah. from Mullaban. John was a storyteller and that, you know? And, you know, I think the oral tradition is very important. Michael J. Murphy used to go around collecting stories, not, because if you don't collect them, yeah. people die, yeah. and they've gone, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I thought it was important that John's stories were, would be written down, and, mm -hmm. and, and so therefore, future generations, and that you know, because there is history in them as well, you know. Oh, absolutely. Well, my, my my father passed away seven years ago, and he had he started to write some stories, uh -huh. um, but unfortunately, he showed it to a publisher who criticised his English, right. yeah, and he literally stopped writing. Right. But I know that his cousins, his his um, uh, nephews and nieces, mm -hmm. were so keen to to hear the stories. Yeah. Because it gave them a sense of where they come, yeah, where they'd yeah, come from. Right, right. Um, but unfortunately, I, when I finally got a recorder to record mm -hmm. it, was it was too late. I wonder what the same publisher criticised Ernest Hamming was writing. Well, this is it. Ernest, yeah. Ernest got up and couldn't couldn't punctuate to save his life. <laughs> and look at what he, he he ended up with. Yeah, and I think that's the, that's the sad thing is that a lot of people become, uh, and I think we maybe through teaching students. A lot of people are frightened to expose themselves on paper through through writing. It's trying to nurture them into that sort of, you know, you've, you've got something worth sharing with everybody mm. else mm. because you are unique. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And I think that's, that's a very certainly, important thing. Certainly great for self-confidence. You know, you can see it in the likes of media and the different tasks. You yeah. have to put, put stages through and that, you know. Yeah. That. Well, I, I mean, one of the things, sort of moving away from the college and coming back again and seeing that there's a different awarding body and they haven't got the word critical analysis in, mm. in the marking criteria. Mm. Uh, I know that with some of the students, we've, we've been getting them to write a production mm -hmm. blog. Um, and they've been saying, right, I'm, I'm going down this journey. Oh, now I've decided I'm going to change. Does that mean I need to throw everything away? And you kind of go, no, no. That's evidence of the story you've gone yeah. on, the journey that you've got to this point. And now you can tell us you're showing critical thinking yeah. because you're, you're assessing the work making judgments and now adapting to what you think would, would bring about better results. Yeah, but the problem is in a lot of cases are, they're not aware that they're doing that. No. 
we have more on the way, so please subscribe to this channel and check out the link below if you'd consider becoming a patron to help us keep making more content. Thanks for watching.